I'm Maria Karowski. I'm a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet. I started ballet when I was five, ballet, tap, and jazz at the local YMCA, and basically trained there until I was 10. And then two principal dancers from the Joffrey, sorry, the Joffrey Ballet came into town, and they opened up a school in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where I'm from. And I basically trained there until I was 15, and then I auditioned for many summer schools. Um, SAB was where I really wanted to go, and I auditioned when I was 14. I didn't go the first year, I went the second year. Um, and then they asked me to stay for the year for this, after the summer program, and my parents were like, no way, I was too young. So I re-auditioned in the next year, went back to Grand Rapids for another year, and then re-auditioned the next year, and then they asked me to stay. And I stayed, and then I got into the company, I guess it was um, the end of that year, so it was uh, June of 1994, and got my apprenticeship with New York City Ballet, and was an apprentice for about a year, or two years, a year and a half, I guess, and then I got a core contract. Then I guess it was two years after that, I got promoted to soloist, and then two years after that, I got promoted to principal. Well, it's definitely a challenge being the tall ballerina, I have to say. Um, it's hard to find partners. Um, and at first, when I started the Balanchine Technique, it was really difficult to move that fast. And, but I think, you know, SAB prepares you for that. But I think also just kind of keep training. And um, it's always been a challenge. But I, I kind of like being the tall one, because everybody's like, oh, yeah, that's the one with the legs. <laughs> but um, it's fun. I mean. Because Suzanne Farrell was tall and you know got to do so many amazing roles, it's nice that I'm kind of following in her footsteps. So I enjoy doing her repertory, and and when you know new, new choreographers come in, they usually try to accentuate the length that I have. So that's nice to you know have that. I mean, I think it's always I think the best thing is always to have new work created on you because they're using what you can do and your strengths. Um, but then there are some like Balanchine ballets and Robbins ballets that I've done that. I feel like we're made on me. Like I do them and I'm like, wow, this feels so right for me. But I definitely feel that um, being choreographed on is probably my favorite thing just because you get to explore so many other sides of yourself and you know, hopefully someone will take a, chan you know, a chance on you and you're you know, pushing yourself to the extreme, so. I mean, I think that the one choreographer that I worked with the most is Marl Biganzetti um, and he, used me, I, I think I may have still been a soloist, um, or maybe just newly promoted to principal, um, and he did his first ballet on me, and I just enjoyed the process so much. He was, he's a great choreographer, he's um, got a really wonderful energy, and he comes into the room and he explains what his you know, ballet is about, and his concept, and his um, kind of partner in crime is Bruno Moretti, who's composed all the ballets he's done for New York City Ballet, and his music is so soulful and deep and it's, it's always um, such a pleasure to work with both of them. They work so well together and just to be in the room with them is very inspiring and motivating and he's actually done three ballets on me so I feel like I've worked with him the most and um, I guess you know, obviously Christopher Wielden. I haven't actually worked with him a lot in New York City Ballet. I've worked with him outside more. That was fantastic because she was like in a mega like freak out you, I think it actually it helps if because you, you can feel each other's weight then if you just keep it there. Whatever you want. <laughs> that was good. That come, the coming around thing. You felt far away from him. I know you fe suddenly felt too far. That's okay. You know what? You just have to commit to the turned in part of it. Do you know what I mean? Like don't don't be afraid to let that and then for it to kind of evolve into that. It's all right. It's sort of nice that it, we have these broken ugly moments that kind of then open up. Broken and ugly is good. Fantastic. Good, you guys. I think being in a company for many years consistently, there's a lot of good things about it. I mean, obviously, um, the rep that New York City Ballet has is huge. So you're, you know, you get the opportunity to do so many different ballets. And when you've done a ballet, hopefully it will stay in the season or continue going in different seasons, and then you can grow in that part. There's, I mean, like, we've done jewels so many different seasons, and every time I, we do it, it's like a new ballet to me, and I get to explore new things, and, you know, 
find different ways of working in it and, you know, musicality, just different things, being more comfortable. I, I mean, I always feel that the first couple of times when you do a ballet, it's always maybe not the greatest and it's always better to have more consistent, you know, times of doing it to make you feel comfortable and when you're comfortable, obviously other things from your own personality will come out. So that's one of the things I love about being able to do that consistently in New York City Ballet. Um, and obviously, you know, we have benefits and, you know, um, a stable paycheck and we get to go on tour and, you know, those, those are wonderful things about it. And just, you know, being part of a big company and working with a lot of people, um, definitely get a lot of different personalities and um, different people that can inspire you and um, make you grow as an artist and you know just to be able to watch a performance every night if you're on to go down in the wings and watch a performance and just see all these like either young people coming up and doing their debuts or you know just watching an older dancer do a part that you do and just you know kind of seeing what they bring to it. I mean I've done I've done guestings. I've, I've guested with the Kirov Ballet a couple of times and with the Munich Ballet and um, like I've done kind of like those star gala things here and there, not a whole bunch of them, but I always find them difficult to do because I don't have a lot of stuff in my repertory that is good for those galas, so that's always a challenge for me. But um, I enjoy working with other dancers and seeing every time I've gone to another company, it's always I always come back inspired just to be able to kind of work with them and see just the talent around the world. It's you know it's amazing. It's not just you know condensed into New York. It's everywhere. Just to be in a room with new people and fresh faces and new talent and people that were beautiful to watch. It's just um, I know I need that as an artist. I need to see that. I need to be pushed. You know, because you, like I said before, you can get a little bit complacent, where you you know all the dancers, you know how they all that, you know their strengths and weaknesses, and when you see it, have new dancers come in, it's like, oh, okay, and all of a sudden you're like working harder. You know. I can't sing, but I love. I mean, I've. I'm, I don't want to say I'm a big musical fan or anything, because I never was. But I think the thrill of being on stage and just having the audience respond the way they do, and just I don't know, I, we do this ballet in New York City Ballet called Slaughter on 10th Avenue and it's you know, taken from on your toes and um, it's like this little section and it's the most fun I have on stage and just to have that high every night I think it's something I definitely have to explore in my life and I love to act on stage, you know, I'd love to be able to use my voice and go out there and speak and you know, just be challenged in a different way. I know that there's other things inside of me that need to be pushed and explored. And, you know, it just, I think acting is probably another just big thing that I would love to try to do. I mean, I've, I've spoken to a lot of people and, you know, um, and I say, well, how did you get into this? What do you do? And last year, I basically said, okay, I gotta try something. I looked online, people gave me some acting, like, um, websites to look at, see for classes. It's really difficult to find a class on a day off. Like Mondays are my day off and I had a really hard time finding a class that I could go to and kind of just explore it. So I ended up um, asking around and I got a, a name of an acting coach and I just started working with her and we worked on monologues and you know scenes and, and a little singing and it's scary to me like I'm terrified but at the same time it's like I mean, it's like playing charades, you know, you get up there, you get that thrill for like that second where you're like being pushed and, you know, and you have that adrenaline rush and that's kind of how it feels to me, you know, where you're just like challenging yourself in a different way. So it's definitely something I like to explore. I love to dance and I would love to continue to do it as long as I can, you know. I want to just move and feel free and abandon and enjoy what I'm doing while I still can. It's a good question, actually. I'm kind of struggling with that at the moment. Um, it's weird. Right now, I'm, I mean, dance is... Um, it's hard for me to go watch ballet. It's hard for me to go and sit and watch a classical ballet. It's, it was something when I was younger that it was all I wanted to do. And I think at this phase of my life, I, I would not buy a ticket to go watch Swan Lake. You know, unless it was somebody that I really love to watch. Um, it's just not with what inspires me anymore. I think um, 
to see really talented dancers with, you know, soul and feeling and, you know, movement that's, you know, good choreography, uh, different companies that do new works that I haven't seen, choreographers that I've never worked with, those kind of things inspire me. Um, to see a dancer go from, you know, a ballet dancer to acting or to go on stage and do some other kind of work inspires me because I know that it can be done. Um, I don't know, it's, it's hard right now. I feel like I'm at a kind of a transition place in my life, so. I think my biggest obstacle is perfection. I've always been a perfectionist and I've always been unsatisfied with my work. And I've, um, if I mess up one little thing on stage, I get upset. And it's been a challenge for me throughout my entire career. And I feel like it's only been the last few years that I can say, you know what? I'm not perfect. I'm never going to be really as good as I want to be. Um, and I just have to appreciate what I can do right now and the talent that I have and, you know, avoid watching videotapes as much as possible because, um, those things aren't mentally good for me and these are things I've just had to learn over the years because just from being hard on myself and I think you know injuries are definitely a challenge I've always had something going on I've started with my back and my foot and then you know neck I've had a lot of neck things um, and that's always hard when you're working a lot and trying to deal with that and you want to be able to do your best but sometimes it's holding you back and you want to keep pushing yourself forward and then you can't because of an injury, but I think that those are probably the two biggest challenges for me. It's weird, I think the, the Big and Zeddy Ballet that I did, um, the second one he created on me, I was going through a really difficult time in my life and um, he had uh, pulled some stuff out of me and I remember being on stage and just feeling so emotional and the music was so beautiful and it, I've never really had anything created on me like that and it just it used so many different things in me and I remember just feeling really alive on stage. I wasn't worried about <clears throat> holding myself up and being perfect because it wasn't about technique, it was about dancing and emotion and feeling and I just remember thinking this is how it should be all the time and I really tried to bring that to all the ballets that I did and it was hard because you're concentrating so much on the technique so much in different ballets that you forget that you're really supposed to be enjoying yourself and just putting yourself into it. So I think that that um, was probably the time where I remember feeling like, okay, this is how I, sh I should be dancing. This is how I should feel on stage because this makes me feel alive and, and inspired and motivated. Well, it's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. I've had a lot of different phases in my life. I mean, I feel like when I was a kid, I didn't really like to dance that much. I liked to dance, but it wasn't like, I didn't like going to ballet class. I was like, ugh. And I knew I was very, I knew I was the best one at my school and I could always do everything, but I felt like something else was driving me. Like I didn't feel like it was coming. I didn't, it wasn't my parents. It wasn't, you know, anybody around me. It was basically, you know, it was basically like a force. Like I felt like something was forcing me to do this. and. And I went with it, and I think, and then I got to SAB, and I was like, oh my god, this is so competitive. I don't know if this is right for me. I don't know if um, this is what I want. I'm I don't even remember why I'm doing this. And it wasn't until we started really um, working on workshop ballets where I felt that it was, that's why I remembered why I like to dance, was performing. You know, I love to perform. I love to, you know, be out there and hear the music and, you know, Push on through. <laughs> I mean, I think for a while I was just doing it for everybody but myself. And I think now is the time where I just, I'm like, you know, I don't know how much longer I'm going to do this. So now I am dancing for myself just to enjoy and feel and, you know, do what this talent that's been given to me, you know, do it as long as I can where I, you know, because I, I know that. You know, there's part of you that always knows that this is what you're supposed to do. You know, you just like, you know that this is your path and we know it at a very young age. And I think when you finally can just like, I don't know, some people have always danced for dance and just loved it. And I've just, I've always been so hard on myself. I've never really loved it and appreciated it and just had the joy of it. I think I've, you know, within the last probably 
five years, I've just really tried to enjoy myself. And I think just being scared too, just being out there and being responsible, having a big principal role and you know, having all this core behind you sometimes is like, am I really out here right now? Are all these people really watching me? And I think, um, you know, now it's, I'm more comfortable and, I, and I'm more comfortable with myself as a person too and I think that has a big thing to do with it, just getting older and, you know, feeling more like myself and not trying to fit in or trying to, you know, be somebody else and being myself, so I think it, that's why I enjoy it more. I mean, I think, I mean, definitely with New York City Ballet, it's, um, it's hard work and it's mentally challenging every day to go into work and, you know, I think we all have expectations of ourselves, but I mean, to be in a major company, especially when you first get in, I mean, I remember having to be responsible to learn so many ballets, but also really fast, and you could be thrown on at any minute, and that was something I didn't expect. And um, I think just trying to keep yourself sane and not worry about anybody else around you. You have to only focus on yourself and your career path and not think, oh my God, well that one's doing that. Because that. that's a big, a lot of people do that and it almost stops them from getting somewhere because they're worried about everybody else but themselves. And I just remember going in and I did lose a few friends my first year in the company because I was very focused and driven and I knew what I, w I wanted to be a principal in that company and I wasn't going to stop until I got there. And I kind of had to go like this and just not... I mean, it's not like I didn't have friends, but the ones that didn't really, wanted the same thing and weren't really trying as hard were frustrated with me. And I actually was kind of chosen to do things. So that was, it was challenging, but when the opportunity presented itself, I wasn't gonna, you know, run away. So I think that was difficult for me because I've always had really close friends. I've always been like, you know, and I think getting into the company and kind of feeling alone and that I was like, okay, this is why I'm here, this is what, I've wanted, so go for it. And I guess you just can't really think about everybody else. You just have to do this because, you know, it's what you want for yourself. And it was a very hard kind of lesson to learn. I think just, you know, the everyday grind of your body and hurting and, you know, maintenance and eating well and taking care of yourself. There's so many things that, you know, are a challenge every day and that dancers have to do. And, I never had to worry about what I ate before and you know, now I have to and some of it's only because you think about the energy you have to sustain for the day and you know you can't eat sugar you're going to drop like that so you have to eat some protein or you have to bring you know little snacks with you just to keep your energy going and drinking lots of water like all these little things that you never really thought you would have to do.